thank you, God, that we could rejoice in you today. We bless you, O oh God, in this day that you have awesomely, wonderfully given us, God. And because you sit on the throne, there's a hope that we have that we live in every single day. And I pray, God, that those who have not found themselves in that living hope, they will, they will take time to get in to that living hope. Because we are living in times where our whole being must be wrapped up within that living hope, God. And I pray that the people of God will come in before it's too late. You told us, you have warned us about the time of the night that no man can work. And I pray, God, the saints of God must not be caught wanting. The saints of God, this is time for trimming wicks and seeing that your oil, your lamp have oil. Because the bridegroom is coming. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, even as we rejoice, because we cannot draw, rejoice unless we are ready. And God, our readiness brings in our rejoicing. But at the same time, God, we want all to be ready, Almighty Father. So, Lord, we are compelling many tonight and beyond God to come on in before it is too late. So, Father, by your Spirit, teach us once again. By your Spirit, lead us once again. By your Spirit, interpret the Word to our lives. That we will not lack anything, but we will be thoroughly furnished. And I pray, God, that is our quest as believers in Christ. To receive all the furnishings of your kingdom. Receive all that you have set for us in the heavens. Let it be in us on the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we want to say thank you, God, for doing this. Let none be satisfied with the lack like Mephibosheth. You are at the king's table. You have the resources, but you don't care about seeing about yourself. I pray, God, we will not waste the precious anointing, the precious wealth, Almighty Father, by your spirit that dwells within us, that we return to you unfinished. But let the work of obedience complete itself within us, God. Let us not be called the disobedient children, but let us be the children of obedience. And God, I thank you tonight. Work this and do this by your spirit, as only you and you alone can. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And everybody says, Amen. Now greet each other, give each other their bounce, and then return to your seats quickly. Bless the Lord. Good afternoon to all of us who are in the house, even for those of us who are online. We want to thank God for all of us. It's a great week, right? I believe it's a good week. Yeah, thank you. I just seen a few of us. And even though it's a few of us, remember what I told you? You could speak through your mask, you know, it's okay. All right, speak through your mask. Somehow, let me ask you all this. You all didn't find yesterday felt like if it was Monday. There was a Monday feeling yesterday. No? None of y'all online? Online, you all felt that yesterday felt like Monday? Well, for me, it felt like Monday. I don't know why. All right, Pearl, you said it, it felt like a little Monday. Yeah. There, there, there was a, a type of a Monday feel on Tuesday. I think that was a good thing. <laughs> Bless the Lord. So, I want to thank God for all of us who are in the house of the Lord, all of us who are alive, and, um, and the Lord's goodness continue to prevail, and we give God thanks tonight. Now, I want to dive into the word sharp this evening. I'm not giving no advertisements. I'm not giving no hors d'oeuvres. I'm not giving none free today. Today there is a price. So the price is listened well. 
<laughs> Amen. So turn with me to 2 Timothy. We still, we are still dealing with this whole stuff with cleansing. We still, I mean, we're still dealing with integrity. We're still dealing with, with, with the, the time factor of things. And the more we get into the word of the Lord, is the more God continues to reveal so much more to us in a time like this. And um, it's good times we're living in, but yet still it's trouble sometimes. And let me tell you, for, for me, for my heart, the troubling, the, the, the trouble sometimes for me in my heart is seeing those who once walk with God walking away from God. That troubles my heart. Listen to me. It troubles my heart. Because I'm telling you, and I'm telling us, and those of us who are online, I'm telling you, and I'm telling us, once you lived out there, you've been there, done that, going back have nothing different than where you have been and what you have done. The only thing that will make the difference is now how deeper you intend to go. But once you have been there to the 10 steps, and you decide, I want to meet 100 steps, well, okay. I'm going 100 steps down now. But there's nothing more. And it hurts my heart to know that we once used to walk with Jesus. We told our community about Jesus. We made our bows unto Jesus. And now it's like there is no existence of and for Jesus. No, that is not good at all. And so that hurts my heart. So I want to compel those of us out there. Maybe you, 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 you're watching it tonight. Maybe you're not. I don't know. But I believe that God by His Spirit is going to be speaking. And when God begins to speak, I'm saying to you, harden not your heart, but incline your heart to God. This is no time to want to pray you want to fall in love with sin and have a love affair with sin. This is the time to want to have a love affair with sin. This is the time to divorce sin. This is the time to not court sin. This is the time not to be attracted to sin. This is the time to walk away from sin. I'm telling you all, it is like that. If you think you could shift God to agree with being double-minded, he says it's written already about that. He says nothing can be done with a double-minded person. And if you want to do and allow God's spirit to do exploits within your life, you cannot be double-minded. Then you're confusing the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost cannot be confused. The confused one is you. The confused one is me. So I pray tonight, and for those of, you who, of us who are online, I pray tonight that you will, you will heed this word. This is no time to fall in love with sin. Divorce it. Divorce it. And I want to talk about that tonight because we have to clean our consciences. The Bible speaks about seeing that your conscience is cleansed because the conscience is what holds the residue of the very acts of sin, thought of sin, working out of sin. Our conscience holds the residue. It stains the conscience. And once your conscience is now seared, whereby your conscience no longer takes the command pulse of the Holy Ghost, then it's very easy for you to go right back. Hello? We got to wash the conscience. See that the conscience is cleansed. We have to cleanse it. Getting this, y'all? So I want us to go to 2 Timothy. We're going to go to from verse 22. Coming on down. Because of how things are going, our time schedule is not going to run over. We, gotta, we have to now ace it in 45, so by 7, we wrap in to run. All right? So get accustomed to the rhythm, to the pace, until we begin to, to get back in the alignment now, as we should. All right? So 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 22 says, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness. We spoke about that. You cannot flee unless you put something in place for, for, for where you're going. There's no such thing as leaving things void in your life. The Bible warns us about 
those who once preside can come back and take ownership seven times as worse. So you don't ever leave it void. So if I'm, I'm, I'm literally fleeing this, I must know where I'm going now that now I can now abide. Are you with me? It's important. So you know they have a saying, jumping out of the uh, frying pan and going into the fire or some kind of stuff like that? Because, because both is hot. But the heat is going to be different if you're in a pot than when you, you jump out and you go into the raw fire. <laughs> All right? But it's the same stove top. Now, it's important for us, all of us as believers, don't let the devil trick you. Don't let yourself trick you and all. Listen to me. The devil is one thing, but yourself is another. Don't let yourself trick you to tell you you don't need a bed. I smell good. You need a bed. Find somebody that have not been in your atmosphere, go by them, and they will smell your atmosphere, your odor. But you who are in your own atmosphere odor will say, I ain't smelling none. But someone who has not been in that atmosphere, from the time they step in, they say, in here smell frowsy. It is smelling right. <laughs> then you know that you got to clean it up. Are we getting this, you all? That's why it's important that we allow the Holy Spirit now to do this work in our lives. To let us know, you need a cleansing. You are not clean. Mm. We're getting this, right? Now, so once we're fleeing, all right, remember it's important. You have to know what you're fleeing from, but what you're putting in its place. You know, it's very important. What you put in its place, in its place is important. Now, <laughs> listen to me real good. Now, this, this, I know I shared about flee youthful lust, and I broaden it that, 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 that we just don't zero in on this whole thing about sexual stuff, right? Because lust is a power. And wherever the power is applied, it surely is going to bring the desired outcome, all right? Now, it's important when it comes now, a lot of folks are, and we who are in counseling are encountering a lot of folks making the same mistakes when it comes to relationships. And they still don't understand how come, how come, how come? Because you have nothing that you have changed concerning where you're going. So you'll take the same path, but it's a different package. Hello. Yo, I could fill this vase with red. I could fill, there's another one. No, that broke. We could fill this one here, this, this little bucket stuff with blue. But whether it is word or whether it is clay, all right, what you really want is what is inside. The contents, all right? Now, if you are container-oriented, then what you would be doing is changing containers, but not giving credence to the reality that what you're looking for for change is content. And so what happens is that the person allow their own lustful desires to delude them. So you say, I don't want trinities. Okay, who you want? All right? So you don't want Trini, so you want whosoever. Let's put it like that. So you don't want banana, you want apple. Okay, cool. What kind of apple do you want? Exactly. You got to know. What about green? <laughs> what about green apple? <laughs> you, all, you all see what I'm saying? It's important. Now, 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 you have to know this. I'm talking to us. All of us as male and female, human beings, I'm not going to say young people. For too long, we're slapping them down with some stuff. And we, we, the leaders, the trendsetters, have not set a good trend. So let's talk to our humanity. What God himself has set, but it has not been nurtured in the right way. So we don't really know what to look upon for that which we so desire. And so we, we are in big error. So we have internal movements that is 
sending out signal externally, but we don't know how to test contents in containers. But as far as I know, when you want to buy a product, like this one, before we use it, and you want to know a little bit about what's inside here, you start to read the label. Hello. Yeah, you read the label. That's correct. My mom would always say, once it's sold and bend you, don't buy it. It will kill you. <laughs> you know? But you read what is on the label. It at least will give you an idea of what is inside here. And that is why the food and drugs um, and uh, the, uh, the other set, not our own here in the States, the, the FDA, you cannot sell a product unless you meet the specifications of letting John Public know at least what you have inside there. You don't need to put directly all of, of, of how much of, but you must give indications. We getting this right? Okay. Who have taught us how at least to know the label? At least to know the label. To read the label that we could say, no, you ain't for me. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Maybe. I wasn't taught that, were you? I don't think any one of us were. But then we need to be taught. Yeah, we still need to be taught. Not because no one took time to get a revelation that it needs to be done. Mean to say, now when revelation is raining down, you open up your umbrella. No, you got to be wet and soaked when revelation is raining down. I want this stuff. Somebody needs to have it. So as far as I know, there's 90% or 75, at least 75% of alcohol inside of here with some other chemicals inside here that at least will give you a 99.9% .9 to destroy whatever germ and the 1% won't kill you. Bless the Lord. So I sanitize my hands again. It feels very cool and nice so we know it has alcohol in it because it's cold. It is soothing. Oh my God, it smells so Sweet, the fragrance. So we know some level of perfume is inside of there. Just as we would have read. So then there's a manifestation from when I put, when I, when I, uh, what do you call that? The, the, uh, the, 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 the presser. <laughs> the compressor. The pump, thanks, the pump. Now, the pump put out some of the content. According to what I have read, I could say, yes, it has this. Yes, it has that. Yes, it has the other. The first sign to know what a person is made up of is what comes out of their mouth. What comes out? Don't you dare ever think that love is blind? Because love is not blind. Listen to me. Show me blind love. A blind man and a blind woman knows how to know your inside. So then, not because they're physically blind, mean to say the power of attraction is blind. The power of infatuation is blind. You will say, but I thought infatuation is spun by what I see, not directly. Not directly. There are folks that you look at and you judge the couple and say, what in heaven's name that person saw upon that person that they could like this, but there's nothing I see. That's you. That's you. But for them, they are not seeing through the eyes that you would see through. But they're seeing through other powers that be. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> and yet still, you have what your eyes behold, and now you hold, but ain't happy. But you look at that couple and say, I don't know how they could be happy, but when you see what's coming out, you say, oh, I wish I had that like them. How come? Food for thought. What are you going to run to? 
what would you put in your life differently that you will not make the same mistake? That is applicable to every area of your life. Because if you know all the days of your life you have been losing and you're fleeing the power of losing, what are you going to be in place, put in place to be a winner? Come on, y'all. What are you going to put in place to win? You must put systems in place to create the change. And if you don't put it, don't expect the change. You're going to get the same old results. Yeah, y'all. I'm telling you all the truth. Now, we could take off this bag here and put a pink one. This is the same container. What are we going to do differently? If we want to be used by the master for his special purposes, what am I going to now do differently that I could now shift from this level to the next level? We could have many desires, and all of us have great desires, but you know how long it takes for it to even start? Because you have not begun to put things in place to build that desire as it needs to be birthed. Every desire that one desires requires and demands change. Because even though many trees or many of our food will come through a seed, do you know that it's not all soil would absorb it and have it and it work with? There are certain seeds that don't work with certain soils. And they tell us that. They say first you have to put it in this form first, let it throw roots out, and then you put it down in the ground with the root. Then put in the seed in the ground to push root. The beginning is different. And until we begin to understand these things, we would be fleeing from, hoping for change, but end up in the same place, in a different location. Yes, man of God? Same thing in a different location. There are many who have gone abroad, far from what took place, wherever, and thought going to a new land, a new people, change will come. Wishful thinking. If you didn't change what needed to be changed inside of you, your feather shall blend in with those other feathers just like you. I am telling you, you may not understand the language, but I'm telling you, your feathers are going to join. They're going to look good together. This is what happens. And so when you are fleeing, it's important to know where you're going. We're getting this online? Make sure you know where you're going, to whom you're going. And if you're going to God, you better know who he is too. Because something that you could just run on to God and want God to join you where you're wrong. God is not going to join you. And when I say join you where you're wrong, he will meet you where you're wrong and tell you you're wrong. You got to change it. That's why he healed the young man. And when he forgave the young man's sin and so forth and his sickness and all that, he says, now, if you continue, if you go back to this, worse is going to happen. And Jesus told him that. So he would let you know. The woman caught in adultery, he met her right there that day. Right in the place of judgment for the ark. But then he showed grace and mercy. She accepted it. She was released to go and not go sin again. So then if she was released to not go sin again, do you think she'll go back and sin? It should be no. So then she is changed in her direction. She is changing her, loca her location, but then she is changing to what she was attracted to and in love with. What about the woman at the well? You know she had five and the sixth one was not hers? Then Jesus told her, you want this here, right? Right now, right? It warrants a change. Go bring your husband and come. Now remember, she is living with a man. God is not about our common law. law. Hello? God is not 
about our common law law. Don't get silent on me in the house, neither online. So for those of us who want to start relationship wrong because of whatever pressing we have, because of the cares of this life here, you want shelter? Well, I, I, I can't do better. So I'll go hard just until I could do better? No. When you want God, he say, go bring husband. Go bring wife. Go bring children. Let's get it right. When God speaks, he does not join us in folly. He is going to speak what he has created from the very beginning. Hello? So common law is not God forte and fortes. He don't like it. And if you want his living water... He wants want your shocking. He wants your building. You all are with me? So those of us who like to be tent dwellers because it is cheaper and easier, you don't have to pay the law to disengage yourself and find it's much easy. There's no weight. There's no strings attached, meaning no ring. But we are foolish. And let me tell us why we are foolish. We are foolish because there is a power that God has created in humanity called the chemistry. And the chemistry is liquids within our body that carries memory. <laughs> oh, Jesus. God has put some stuff in the brain to hold memory. For a woman, it's different. For a man, it's different. That's why smell could bring back the memory of an occasion. Strong! And years may have passed. Where did that come from? It was in you. The Bible does not lie, but we do lie. And we make the Bible a book of lies because we think that what is written is not applicable to me in my own little stupor of the strength of myself. When the Bible said, don't provoke some stuff before it's time. And we think we could because I'm good. You better know I got the experience. You, you do? Okay, no problem. Say, so you unleash this and you're going to have mares in the night. <laughs> mares in the night. They call it night. Mares. And that's a spirit. Because you now listen to your nice worship. You're not, you just read the word of God. And you went into a sleep. And all of a sudden, your mind is invaded with stuff you didn't just read. Where did that come out from? That's a nightmare you have in there. We ain't talking about Hollywood foolishness. We talk about the things I ought not to to do that I find myself doing that's a mere it is frightening because I'm fleeing from but at the same time it's as though where could I hide from this thing that even when I close my eyes it is there mm. okay you're all getting silent you're all thinking on me <laughs> I like when y'all put this kind of studious thinking cap on. Y'all just look so cute. God is good. <laughs> yeah. Even behind the mask, I see your eyes getting like shiny on kick. <laughs> and y'all taking mental pictures. What is he talking about now? God is good. <laughs> Keep thinking. And you online too. I know you thinking. I know you thinking too. Now let's, let's move on quickly. Now, I want us to understand... Whenever you're fleeing because something have had you captured, find yourself with people who have gone through a process by loving up, loving up on God, which is fleeing what you have fled to. But they found refuge in their relationship now with God. You see, this is what the Lord 
what, what Paul is helping Peter to understand when he says now, when you flee this evil desire of youth, you must pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, which are these are the things that you must pursue, but you need help to pursue it because remember my faith is distorted, my love is distorted, and I have no peace. That too is distorted. Whenever lust take over, and especially evil desires, those three are distorted. I need to get them back where they ought to be in holiness. In order for that to happen, he says, now you must find yourself alongside those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Alongside them. Come on, you all. Because you cannot tell me you want to stop drinking, but you're still going by daybreak. Yeah. Whatever you're fleeing from, you cannot go where it provokes it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Come on. I don't know why we like to play this game. Oh, 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 I'm going to test my strength today. You, we don't have no strength over those inner stuff that has controlled us. We think we do, and really we don't. It overrides us. What do we do? We try and make ourselves busy. You got to make yourself busy. Because if I keep my mind on it, I know what's going to happen. That is your method. But your method is getting weaker and weaker. Every single day. So you're losing the battle. In order to win the battle, you must find those. Find yourself along with those who call on the Lord. Because you have to call on the Lord to rectify this inside of you. But it's not anybody. Those who have a pure heart, a pure-hearted person is going to feel the infirmity of that which you're going through. They will be able to say, I know what's going on with you. Come, you could get help. Instead of saying, I didn't look for that from you, it's two different types of reply. And from the time folks want to talk about, I didn't look for that from you, then you think, I, um, I, oh, oh, your flesh, you live in this earth, you And until we start to understand, it's true that sets people free. And we give ourselves to such truth, where we are plagued in our humanity. There are many who will not come and talk to some of us because they have heard us make certain statements. They say, I can't share this with you because the first thing you're going to tell me is you're disappointed in me. And I really don't want you to be disappointed in me. So guess what? They'll never talk to you. We getting this right? We must find those who have a pure heart. Pure-hearted people. They are rare. They are rare. I'm telling us, pure-hearted people are rare. They are the ones that love deeper than the skin. They understand humanity ills. As Father God said, I know that you are but dust. I know that you are flesh. I know you're frail. I know you're weak. But guess what? I want to help you. Those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Do you know what it sounds like when you're calling to the Lord from the place of a pure heart? Read the Psalms. Read David's Psalm. Read when he began to go down and he began to say, God, I'm filthy, God. I'm not even worthy before you, God. And he began to speak from that place. But yet still you will hear him say, but you, O God, remain the lift of my head. And he began to put it out on God now to realize God is the one that gets us out from there. And it is so important for us to know that God the Father allows us to know this as he redeemed us. And then he tells us now, get others out the same way how I got you out. Pure-hearted people are not ashamed where they slip, slide, trip, stumble, fell. But it was God. Because nobody that have fallen can ever get back up but by the grace of God.
So let none speak to you as though, well, I know this and I know that. Listen, you got some pious pride folks outside here that, listen, want to weigh your value based on, but I didn't done what you did. Like if you have redeeming grace. You do not have redeeming grace. You know grace from the Redeemer. And the knowledge of grace that you know is because of your sin that you still conceal, and the Redeemer didn't put it out on the market. Okay, y'all, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> but, but until, until we, we start, start to know what a pure heart is, could you believe that maybe Rahab talked to her husband about erasing in the books, that whenever they are speaking of me, they don't ever use my past life. But it is written in the books that she is Rahab, the harlot. How would you feel to know that they are not going to erase that, but that must be attached and used for credibility because it has to do with capital G-O-D, God. Oh, come on, you all. Why do you think Joyce Meyer's ministry is so strong? Let me tell us something. Why do you think, think that men are at the side of their wives or their women, whoever it is, in her ministry? Most times you don't see men going to ministries like that. Such a call. Why? Because Joyce is not afraid to speak from the place where such mass has been done. She is not afraid because the gospel has power to go into the mess and give the message for a lifetime and know the Redeemer live. And that's why it is spinning so much and men come sit to hear. <laughs> Listen to me. Those of you who are online and those of us who are in the, con in the congregation, men are funny creatures. Let me say it again. Men are funny creatures. Bascom, don't open your eyes so big, son. Because I use two negative words, funny and creatures. <laughs> That's correct, men in black. What, what, listen. There are few women on the earth that understand the true anatomy of a man. Not all knows, because you don't give yourself to know it every day. The same way I could say about a woman, they are funny creatures too. Is that not true, ladies? You always say, yeah. Because sometimes they and all just tell their girlfriends, I don't know what's happening with me today, but I feel this and I feel that, and I feel that, and I just didn't feel like, I just didn't feel like, and, and, but there's a whole hour I told you I'm coming, but I just didn't feel to wear this dress, and I just didn't feel to put on this makeup, I just don't know, I think I'm going. And it's like, so what brought all, I don't know. Funny creatures. All the set of feelings and no production. What's all this? And then the man is just going to say, I surrender all. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Why? Because God is good. Somebody wife ain't here tonight. <laughs> Funny creatures. When the woman is away, they get loud. <laughs> I'm just kidding, y'all. But y'all, in truth, in truth, in truth, have we been all of us, even those of us online, who have sat us down and said, let me teach you the anatomy of a woman, my son. At least the balance in the book of Proverbs, it begins with the father and the son. And at the end, it ends with the mother. So both male and female had part to play in the rearing of a prince, much less a queen. 
Hello, somebody. Because it's both male and female that have to come together to repopulate. So we need both inputs to strike the balance. That's why some of us are imbalanced. Because this is what is happening now in the world. The single parent method, we have not learned how to ace it, and God has put it right there. He says, single parent, hey, fatherless, I'll, be, I'll, I'll bring the balance. Husbandless, I'll bring the balance. But we didn't trust the words of God. So we went in search without God bringing. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to help this generation not to make the same mistakes that the generations before made. If you got to do it, let's do it right. Especially if we're in Christ, at least we have everything right here. Even Apostle Paul in the church in Corinth, he said, Hey, you all burn it up! It's better you get married. Because you all are unleash this thing here. And you can't stop the flow. So dragonfly flying by night. Yeah. We in trouble. Get married. Because if you don't get married and you want Jesus, you are creating an abomination. Hello? Church in Corinth. You mean those things are real? Yes, it's real. And we got to understand this. So now I need to know now, so okay, we lose with myself. But is this person really the person for me to marry now? Oh, now you see it's another twist of the coin. So now I have to now start to practice what I should have begun with. <laughs> Watch this here. Let's move quickly. In fact, time up already. I, I know which part we're going. <laughs> but in verse 24, 22, 23, I mean. Do not have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. Verse 24, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. I spoke a lot about that last week. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Those who oppose him, he must gently instruct. Now, this is where we ended. But then hear what he says now. He says, in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. Now, this is not about any, mini miny, more when it comes to God. This is about they who have done wrong and oppose should realize that what I have done was wrong. That when I come to God, he will grant me because he didn't have to use the rod to get me to realize I was wrong. Come on, yo. Sometimes some folks say, I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to do it because I was wrong. Okay. Let's go the tooth for tooth, eye for eye wrongs. But as far as I have been instructed again, once the power lies inside of you to create the peace, do it. Come on. Because this is not directly about right and wrong, because you could be right. But then wrong methods. Wrong approach. Wrong attitude. Wrong reply. Wrong action. But you're right. But at the same time, you're working your right wrongs. Come on, saints of God. And this is why we have so much feud in the houses of God. Much feud in the houses of God. Because everybody say, I'm right. And until they see, well, we have been admonished by Jesus, deal with, deal with your beam. Then you can help your brother with your speck. We getting this, y'all? So now, God is willing, and I know that God is willing, because it is always of the heart of God that men would come to repentance. Godly sorrow would lead to repentance. God does not take delight in the destruction of anyone. But then would I humble myself and say, God, I, I, I don't think I should have done what I did. 
And God, I need you to forgive me. And then you go to the person. And you clear that up. Because sometimes we can find ourselves in foolishness. Real foolishness. Sometimes you join in a talk you should not have even joined in. And it is foolishness. Sometimes you allow a person to carry on a conversation they should not have even said raised. It's foolishness. And you have to say, God, forgive me. I help. I help cause this fire to blaze higher. Come on, y'all. Hmm. I train some firewood too. <laughs> in conclusion, in conclusion, in verse 26, there is a, before verse 26, the last part of verse 25, there is a knowledge we must come into, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. There is a truth knowledge that we need to know, we must have in our lives. It is applicable for every area. Let me give you a good example. If you are freshly employed in a company you are so desire to uh, be employed in, it is important that you know the truth and the knowledge that you ought to know who your bosses are, not the workers. What has happened? We go into places and you make friendship with workers to hear the garbage can of the workers about your bosses. And they stain you inside. I don't care whatever your boss is. You have to know this is the person that I report to. You must know that knowledge. That's the truth. Regardless of the crookedness in that person's life, it does not nullify this true knowledge. Yes, you all, I'm telling you. And if you are one that don't like the person, listen, it is wrong for you to share your dislikes, your personal dislikes about somebody to the first person who now coming in. That's wrong. You are contaminating the person before they even come to their own conclusion. It is wrong. And we have practiced some of this kind of nonsense. In Christianity, I am telling you, we have done wrong in that arena. We have done wrong as though God cannot clean up. God cannot turn around. God cannot change. We have done wrong. And there are those who are still living in that realm of that wrong still up to today. It's wrong. It should never be, but it is. It exists. See to it that you are not one to carry on that type of wrong. Because God does not. He said, as soon as you repent and I deal with your sin, I cast it as far as. The east is from the west, that it will be of no remembrance anymore. So then how can we, the children of God of his image, and like this as far as we claim, still could catch it? Because it's a matter of choice. Thank you, Dalton. That's what we do. We choose to catch it. That I would always seem to be more spiritual than you. But what I love about God is that leave them alone. But I want you to know my grace and my mercy. Because I'm the one to deal with this and to erase this and to renew you and set you to go right before your enemies. We need to understand when God says, I, 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 I prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. 20 years, you still want to be an enemy? Come on. 25 years, you still want to be an enemy and COVID in the atmosphere? Come on. <laughs> COVID is the enemy, not me. <laughs> we, we got the same enemy. <laughs> COVID didn't care about you. COVID didn't care about me. You mess around, COVID killed both of us together. And then we had to stand before the judgment seat of God. And now you have to give an account. You hated me for 25 years. And God said, but, but, but I'll forgive you. Why you couldn't forgive your brother? Oh, okay. I'm telling us since we need cleansing. We need cleansing. And it's going to hinder the work of God through our lives and in our lives. We want to be used in all sorts of ways, but yet still we show that God, God, God has no power to deal with sin. By how we live one with another. It is so sad. Listen to me. I pay nobody no mind who want to hold whatever they want to hold against me. I don't pay you no mind. You're not going to suck my energy when the day comes. 
I live and breathe and have my total being in him, not in you. I'm telling you, not in you. So when I see you, hi, hello, how are you doing? How is God in your life? That's what I got to do. But let me conclude. Getting excited. So in 26, and uh, they may come to, the, to their senses. Now, you see this whole time about senses here now? Whenever you see your senses have been touched by sin and rebellion and disobedience, I'm telling you, it weakens and shifts your feet from the steps that have been ordered. Eh? You don't even say, no, you're going astray. And many have gone astray, and they don't even say no, they have strayed. Have you ever gone uh, uh, on any one of our beaches, and you love to float, and you just throw yourself, and you close your eyes? The worst is to play your floating and close your eyes. From the time the eyes close, you lose all senses of direction. And you're there, and the water feeling so nice below your body, because it's wave, you know, it's wave. I feel so nice, and you you know, yeah, yeah, hearing all of y'all, and I hear the music too, yeah. When you open your eye, you realize you quite so, everybody quite so, and they're looking small, so you're surely in floating in, right? You say, God, I gotta make it in. Exactly. Why? Because you close your eyes. Whenever you start to play around with sin, it shuts down the eyes of the Holy Ghost. And Paul spoke about putting out the light of the Holy Ghost. Whenever the light of the Holy Ghost is put out, you begin to drift into the world and you don't know when, where, how did this happen? Start to twin yourself with the people of the land. All of a sudden you're picking up a type of friendship with, who is this one now? Who is that you bringing in my house? Listen, wait, 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 wait. Let your friends meet outside. Not up. This one look like if they come in here, gunman go reach in my house. Listen. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. The days we are living in, if they can't appear as I who does mind you, I am I am going to tell you, mind my business and leave their business alone. Because if they can't appear as I have dressed you, don't bring them inside here. I'm, don't bring them inside here. I'm sorry, but don't bring them unless you're bringing them for me to minister to them. Don't keep company with that. Because the day you want to come inside here and tell me this looks nice on you, I know your sense is getting dull. Yeah. And once you start to get dull, the bell does never go to rest. <laughs> I'm telling you. Let me conclude. How much conclusion already, sex? <laughs> That's the fourth one, okay. Let me conclude. <laughs> Watch this. And they, and they will come to their senses and escape. But King James said, not the trap, but the snare. Next week, I want to deal with coming to your senses to escape. I want to deal a little bit with the snare. Because we have to understand this whole thing about snares. How it works. Because whenever you begin to say, God, I'm serious. I want to walk with you. The enemy sets a snare. Stand with me, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Bless the Lord. If you're clapping, clap good. Yes. Bless the Lord. All right. So we have one person we're going to pray for. That is... Um, Hallelujah. 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 Come on, fill this house with the worship, everybody. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. He's worthy of the glory today. We came to bless him. We came to honor him. Come on, lift his name. My hallelujah belongs to 
you My hallelujah belongs to you Come on, Mount Zion, come on My hallelujah My hallelujah belongs to you It's his today, come on Say my hallelujah My hallelujah belongs to you You deserve it You deserve it Say my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. I won't say hallelujah to anything else, but my hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. The next time we're going to meet is going to be on Friday. Young people, remember, be in line for six with Minister Ricken. He is dealing with matters with you. Next Sunday, we got to be here at 8, 8 sharp. Remember, time dropped down again. So we're going to have half an hour of... Um, of worship and then the next half to 45 going to be word and then we're going to be out of here again until further notice we thank all of you who are airing online continue to air online all of those who had birthday for this week remember happy belated and happy birthday to every single one of us so let us get ready to just give god what due him let us give our tonight's contribution and god i thank you for every contribution bless your people as you go into the city the country and the field until we gather again in jesus name and everybody says Amen. So let's come and just, as the usher would lead, give, and then we can depart to go. <laughs>